Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I am Megan Pitluck Schmidt. I am a member of the uh, board here at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Reston. Whether you are on Zoom or here in the sanctuary, we are so glad you are with us this morning. No matter how old or how young you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, however you identify and whomever you love, know you are welcome here. Today, our music direct director, Cynthia Young, is bringing us the children's choir to share an important Earth Day message for our congregation. We are very happy also to welcome guest artist, Alexis Bernard to UCR. Thank you for being here this morning, Alexis. Um, there are a few announcements to share with you this morning, but first I would like to invite Reverend Aileen to come forward and give her special announcement. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of joining several members of our congregation, Tim Norton, Rod Paolini, Don Randall, and Ruth Grubb for a voter mobilization organizing school at All Souls UU in DC. 13 UU congregations from the DMV were represented as well as organizations such as the League of Women Voters, UUSJ, among others. We would like to invite you to be part of our voter mobilization team here at UUCR. This year is an important election year, so we would love your help. See Tim Norton or me if you're interested. Okay, and uh, now I have three additional announcements. UUCR will be holding a newcomer orientation on Saturday, May 4th at 9.30 a.m. If you're brand new or newish to UUCR, this is an event to attend if you have questions about Unitarian Universalism or UUCR. This informative event will be hosted by Reverend Aileen and UUCR leaders. Breakfast, snacks, and lunch will be provided and childcare will be available. For questions or to RSVP, contact membership co-chair Kathy Dillianis in the back. Uh, the Spring Community Cabaret is scheduled for May 11th. Do you sing, play an instrument, dance, tell stories, recite poetry, have some awful dad jokes, or have another hidden talent you'd like to share? There's still room for more performers. Performances should be under five minutes. Please submit your performance idea by May 3rd. Remember, anyone can participate. You don't have to be part of the music program or the choir to perform in the cabaret. Poets, storytellers, comedian, dancers, etc., are welcome. And finally, mark your calendars. Finally, but uh, certainly not least at all. Uh, Sunday, June 2nd at 4 p.m., we will be celebrating the installation of our new settled minister, Reverend Aileen Fitzke. Please note there will be no morning service that day. Okay. And now let us center ourselves for worship. Please take some deep quieting breaths with me. Let us enter our time of worship together as we enjoy this morning's prelude.
as we remember our Jewish siblings celebrating Passover this week. Our opening words are by Rabbi Rachel Berenblatt from the Velveteen Rabbi's Haggadah. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls wrapped in their cloaks upon their shoulders. Exodus 12, verse 34. You'll need to travel light. Take what you can carry, a book, a poem, a battered tin cup, your child strapped to your chest, clutching your necklace in one hot possessive fist. So the dough isn't ready, so your heart isn't ready. You haven't said goodbye to the places where you hid as a child, to the friends who aren't interested in the journey, to the graves you've tended. But if you wait until you feel ready, you may never take the leap at all. And infinity is calling you forth out of this birth canal and into the future's wide expanse. Learn to improvise flat cakes without yeast. Learn to read new alphabets. Wear God like a cloak and stride forth with confidence. You won't know where you're going. But you have the words of our sages, the songs of our mothers, the inspiration wrapped in your kneading bowl. Trust that what you carry will sustain you and take the first step out the door. Uh, our opening hymn this morning is a song called This Pretty Planet by Tom Chapin. And the words are on the back of your order of service. And I think there, there's a slide that will be projected up here. Is, is there a slide? Yeah, okay. So um, it's around, and we're going to invite Alexis Bernard, our violinist, to join us in singing. Um, how about we remain seated for this? And um, We've sung this song before, so maybe some of you will remember it. We will go through it once, and um, Alexis will play with me. And if you know it, join in. And if not, you can just listen. And then we'll sing it again as a congregation. And then we'll do the round. OK, but well, let's start by just singing it together. part round. Okay, so we're going to have group one, group two, and then Alexis will be group three all by herself. And we'll do that twice. Okay, so once all together and then twice in a round. Okay, with the introduction.
Good morning. Our chalice lighting this morning um, is from Lynn Harrison. It's titled, Committed to Respond. Committed to respond to the call of a wounded world, we join together this day with loving hearts, hands, and minds, embracing the interconnected web of water, air, and earth, we light a fire of sustaining hope, ever bright with love and justice. May we bring forth this day new wisdom, strength, and courage to create a new world, not of wealth, but well-being. A world of new peace and abundance for all. As we give thanks for this earth, our shared and singular home, may we dedicate ourselves to its ongoing care, rising to the calls deep within us and all around us. May we respond today and always with courage and love. Here at UUCR, we have a beloved tradition of singing our covenant together every Sunday. Love is the spirit of this church. Uh, we will remain seated as we sing our covenant together. And if you are here this morning for the very first time, we hope you will receive this song as our blessing to you. Is the time of, in our service when we share our joys and concerns so that no one ever has to hold them alone. If you are joining us remotely this morning, you may wish to light a real or virtual candle wherever you are to mark what is in your heart. As members of the in-person congregation, place stones in the water here in the sanctuary. If those of you at home would like to share what is on your heart today, in the congregational chat on the screen, please write to all attendees and please remember what you share will be public. Those at home may then read others' joys and concerns in the chat and then enter into your own time of prayer and reflection as we all listen to Alexis and Diane play our meditation music. So I invite those of you in the sanctuary to come up and place stones in the bowl.
Let's be one in prayer and meditation, spirit of life and love that so faithfully animates our creation. We are grateful for this community that is with us in times of both joy and sorrow. We hold in our hearts this morning all who are facing any hardship or difficulty, those who are grieving or facing illness or disability in their friends or their loved ones. In particular, this morning, I was asked to share that Glenn Downing had two heart attacks on a cruise he was on this week. He will be home today, so please send all your thoughts, prayers, and good everything to him and, and Mary. And also, in particular this morning, I want to share a story I heard this week on NPR. In the midst of the pro-Palestinian encampment at Columbia University this week, a group of 75 Jewish students and a dozen Jewish faculty, all with the consent of the encampment organizers, held a Seder for Passover. In the midst of the encampment, said one of the professors, it was beautiful to see so many different cultures participating. So we light this candle for those moments of hope and solidarity amidst chaos, conflict, and complexity. Let us take a moment of silence. Good morning, and I invite anyone who is feeling young of body to come forward and sit on the floor. There's also a couple of seats right up here, and welcome to everyone, wherever you may be. Welcome, welcome. I need to get out a prop. Our Earth Day prop. So, we also have a photo. Lots of photos today, so I hope you can all see the screen. And I was going to ask if you've seen this photo. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I love, ah! What you were seeing before was outer space. Without the, <laughs> so thank you. So have you seen this photo? Yes, it's the blue marble photo that NASA astronauts took from space. And many astronauts have talked about seeing the Earth as they look out from space. Bill Anders said, we came all this way to explore the moon, and the most important thing we discovered was the Earth. And when Karen Nyberg, another NASA astronaut, looked back at the Earth, she said, or she saw even more than that blue marble, she said, every single part of the Earth reacts with each other part. It's one thing. Every little animal is important in that ecosystem. And seeing the Earth makes you realize that and makes you want to be a little more proactive in keeping it that way. If I could get every earthling to do a circle of the earth, I think things would run a little differently. But most of us haven't been out in outer space. Don't know, you want to? Yeah? I'm sure there's people who want to who are sitting here today. But even without doing that, we can appreciate this by taking a journey through photographs and what we know of the Earth. If we come closer to the Earth, we will see ice caps covering the poles and, and oceans containing their own wonders and mysteries. We will see magnificent mountains stretching miles above the Earth. And going closer still, we'll see deserts with blowing sand, leafy forest canopies, and plains of grass. 
As we move even closer, we can see farms, towns, and cities. Then individual plants and animals. And I wonder what plant or animal is your favorite? And as we do in RE, if you're up here close to me, I invite you to hold your hands up if you have something you'd like to share. And when you get the earth ball, you may share it. If you're in chat, you can write in, or in, online, you can write in chat. And if you're out here, you can raise your hand. Your favorite plant or animal. Milkweed and monarchs. Wow, those go together well. Dogs. I mean, Dog? my, wait, my animal flavor, but not Dogs? Okay, can you pass it to the next person? Or if you don't have one, you can keep on passing it. Oh. It just. Dolphins, puffins? And cats, okay. Would you like to, or, or? Chickens, ah. I think I saw a picture of chicken from someone else this morning. Cheetah, okay. Oh, she said cheetah, okay. I saw a picture of a chicken. What? A manatee, oh. Do we have anyone else close by? Well. I'm not going to pass the earth ball to you, but if you could shout it out. <laughs> Jumping spiders. Jumping spiders, ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sea slugs? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? And did, we, did we have anyone in chat? Okay, well, thank you for all of this. Oh. Violet. Ah, I actually like violets a lot too. So, yeah. So in religious education, we oh yes, you have something. Cows. Oh, those are good. Yeah. So in religious education, we talk about the importance of all animals including those spiders and sea slugs. And it reminds me of my biology teacher who helped me realize the importance of all animals. He liked saying beautiful, beautiful whenever he talked about an animal or plant. And his favorite topic was parasitology, the study of parasites, animals, creatures that live in the bodies of some people and pets and that most of us really don't like. But he'd talk about tapeworms and hookworms and say, beautiful, beautiful. And I'd always stop and think and then realize that, yes, all life is amazing and connected. If we return to our journey, if we look closer with a microscope, we would see the cells of plants and animals and it make us up. These are amazing tiny machines that process food and water to give us energy. They give us structure and protection. And they carry messages through our bodies. If we could go even closer, just things even smaller than that, we would find hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon that all came out of an exploding star and came here to Earth and makes up all living creatures. We are all connected. We are all stardust and we need one another. From the tiny mosquito to the huge blue whale. And as the astronauts who looked back from space saw this is a beautiful marble, but it's also fragile. And it needs all of us to take care of it. I don't know about you, but when I think about that, that can seem like an overwhelming responsibility. But I find hope in you, the children of UUCR, 
because without going into space, you recognize the beauty and the importance of this blue marble, our blue boat home. And with the adults here, you are doing things to care for the earth right now. This summer, some of you went to the stream behind the building here, and you looked at my macroinvertebrates this last summer, yes. Looked for micro, macroinvertebrates, tested for salt, and you identified that we and our neighbors have to be more careful about fertilizers and salts and other chemicals we use because it runs into that stream, all the other streams around us. Some of you explored the playground outside and you asked to make birdhouses to replace the ones that were falling apart on the playground. And we heard that request and Holly Anderson and Jesse Fortner worked with you to build these nesting boxes. You also worked with Lori Dodd to make bee houses, and you learned about the importance of native bees. And finally, just a few weeks ago, you did a nature audit with Lori and found exploring our grounds here at UUCR. Our journey today will continue a little bit later in the service as Lori Dodd shares more about this small piece of that beautiful blue marble. And you may now go to your seats. As a self-funded church, UUCR relies on the generosity of its members and friends to fund daily operations and to ensure that the church and its resources are here for us and others now and in the future. Pledges support our worship and music programs, our religious education program, programs for members and friends, community outreach, and connections to Unitarian Universalism. We now invite you to support the work of UU Reston by making your donation in the collection plate if you are here in the sanctuary or at the link on the slide and in the chat box if you're online. Thank you for your generosity and support of our beloved spiritual home.
Is the light supposed to be green or red? Or is this on? Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Laurie Dodd, and in honor of Earth Day, I would like once again to talk to you all about the garden here at UUCR. We saw a picture of our entire globe and of the oceans and ice caps and a very large scale of the Earth. Uh, but I wanted to speak about the scale that's right here in our congregation, our garden. As you know, this is now our nearly native garden. We keep some beloved plants that are not native, like our uh, crabapple tree that bloomed so beautifully in recent weeks. Uh, but I think many of you already know the reasons to transition into a native garden. I will briefly recap that. Uh, because native plants are those that lived in our area long before our time, hundreds or thousands of years ago, that evolved along the insects and birds, the bacteria and fungi, the mammals and reptiles, everything that makes up our ecosystem. And our native plants meet the needs of our native animals and vice versa. So as happy as I am to celebrate the local cherry blossom festival that we had, I understand that as much as humans love those Japanese flowering cherry trees, North American caterpillars do not. There are few or no caterpillars that actually get sustenance from those gorgeous trees. And so if our landscape were filled with flowering Japanese cherries, we would have no butterflies. We would have fewer birds and our world would be poorer for it. So according to the research of entomologist Doug Tallamy, a single pair of chickadees, and we have several in our gardens, needs between 6,000 and 9,000 caterpillars to get through one year. So we need to provide the, the native plants and the uh, restore the environment of our local piece of land here on this earth. And we have a goal to, to do our part to regenerate the biodiversity and restore the ecosystem functions of all the uh, critters and plants that live here at our church. So I invite all of you to join me in the joy of being part of our living environment. You may know that along with dozens of others from this church, I've put many hours into getting our garden up to the blooming state that I hope you saw when we came in, you came in today uh, with many more blooms to come. And uh, we've had a lot of involvement from our youth as well. We heard about the bee houses that have been made. We know that uh, our youth just last week, we were required in order to become certified as an Audubon at home wildlife sanctuary, we were required to identify at least 10 species that have come to our garden since we have planted more native plants. And I think some of our youth came up with as many as 22 species, including birds and butterflies and bugs and, and the deer that we saw even yesterday during, uh, last week during service, there was a deer on our property. Um, so we do have a new certification for our congregation. And we've also had our youth group install the birdcage looking support that holds up some of our native plants in that garden. Uh, by fall, I hope that our UUC garden plantings will be done, although it's always a work in progress, but uh, we are working towards a better stage of completion than you currently see. I know. There are many flowers out there. There are also many weeds and many unplanned parts of the garden. And so my hope is that this year, we will get many more volunteers to join the team of working in the garden. And so to do that, my habit has always been to kind of garden when I feel like it. And so I'm here on many hours, but that's not a formula to getting others involved. So we are working towards coming up with a calendar of work days including starting next Saturday from three to five here at the church. And again on Sunday after the service up until about 1 p.m. And so I hope you will sign up for those dates and that you will 
uh, stay informed about other garden work days that we may have coming up. And we hope to have many ways for people to get involved. Uh, most of the roles that we have for the garden do require a level of strength and mobility that may uh, um, not be available to all of you. Uh, I hope those of you who can muster what it takes to do the work will do so. But we also have some roles for others, including the fact that I wish I had a photographer to provide beautiful photographs to display behind me today. It's one of the tasks that I tend to neglect as my hands are in the dirt. So someone to help document uh, photographically some of our work days and the beauty of our garden would be much appreciated. Uh, I hope to give a garden tour after service, although I know there's also a coffee and many other activities going on after service. Uh, so I hope that any of you who think you might find bringing a piece of, of the native ecosystem back to its functioning role, I uh, hope you would find it a role that you would be interested in taking and join in to support the church garden or plant some native plants in your own garden, or even just enjoy our church grounds or other areas of our earth uh, where you can see the miracles and li of life and growth that are all around us. And so this is how I hope uh, to recognize Earth Day and bring a bit of Earth Day to every day. I will see you after the service and ask you to sign up for Saturday and Sunday. Thank you so much. Linda quoted the NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg in her reflection. Every single part of the Earth reacts with every other part. It's one thing. Every little animal is important in that ecosystem. And seeing the Earth makes you realize that and makes you want to be a little more proactive in keeping it safe. If I could get every Earthling to do one circle of the Earth, I think things would be a little different. Linda took us on a journey from space to the particularities of life on the planet down to the microscopic. Lori brought us the specifics of our own land and our relationship to it. We sometimes imagine that we have to play some dramatic role in saving the planet from destruction. Suzanne Simard of Finding the Mother Tree, I talked about her last week, said that the most important thing we can do is find that place on earth that is important to us and really bond with it, understand it, learn about it, journey with it. How much do you know about this place where we live? How many people know what watershed this church is a part of. Just so you know, it's part of the sub watershed difficult run of the larger Chesapeake watershed. How many of you can name some native plants, trees or shrubs of this particular ecosystem in Reston? Anyone? Can anyone name a local plant? I know Lori can. <laughs> okay. Angeline? Bleeding heart? Okay. Yeah. Violets, they are native and they're beautiful. Virginia bluebells, yes, those are nice too. Black eyed Susans, yes. And what are some of the, oh, what did you say? Swamp weed. Yes, and milkweed, yes. What are some of the animals native to this area? Yes, Vivian. Robins. Cardinals, they definitely are. Julia? Monarch caterpillars. Monarch butterflies and chickadees, yes. 
Foxes, yes. Foxes and bobcats and coyote and deer and birds of prey, eagles and falcons and hawks and owls and songbirds. We mentioned the cardinals, chickadees, finches. What? Northern water snake, good. Copperheads, good. Yes, we have reptiles and amphibians, all sorts of frogs. Peepers, yes, peepers. I love those. What? Barred owl, yeah. Woodpeckers, I love woodpeckers. Cicadas, oh yeah, they're gonna be, they're gonna be singing this year. Tent caterpillars. My yard is a certified wildlife habitat. That was not my doing. It was the hard work of the people who lived there before me. They valued the creatures that live here in this area and they created a haven for them. It was one of the reasons I bought the house I did. I have kept it up as best as I can and I am rewarded by the song of a multitude of bird, bird species and the occasional disturbing cry of foxes. I wake up and, have you ever heard those? They're scary. <laughs> I wake up and I notice that deer have flattened some of my plant beds as they have used them to sleep. I was even visited by a raccoon one day as I was writing in my office. It walked right in the door. <laughs> And squirrels peek in my window inquiringly, small hands clasped if I have not filled the bird feeders in a timely manner in the morning. <laughs> and they are often joined by cardinals and crows, morning doves, and a few varieties of woodpeckers. And my summer nights are filled with tree frog and bullfrog songs. Today, we are celebrating the traditional UU flower ceremony. As you notice, there's all sorts of flowers that all y'all have brought. The flower ceremony, uh, it was initiated by Norbert Chapek, a Unitarian minister in Czechoslovakia in the early 1920s. He was inspired by the natural world around him. One day as he was out on a walk, he saw flowers of all different shapes and sizes, and he was in awe of their beauty. The next Sunday, he asked all the people of his church to bring a flower or a budding branch or even a twig. Each person was to bring one. He told them to bring whatever kind of flower they felt called to bring. And so, writes Janine Grossmeyer in A Lamp in Every Corner, on the next Sunday, which was the very first Sunday in summer, the people came with flowers of all different colors and sizes and kinds, and there were yellow daisies and red roses, there were white lilies and blue asters, dark-eyed pansies and light green leaves, pink and purple and orange and gold, there were all those colors and more. Flowers filled all the vases, and the church wasn't so plain and simple anymore. Those flowers are like ourselves, Norbert Chapek said. Different colors, different shapes, and different sizes, each needing different kinds of care, but each beautiful, each important and special in its own way. And so Unitarian Universalists all around still celebrate this tradition in the spring. Today we celebrate and we remember the con contribution of Norbert Chapek and his wife Maya, also a Unitarian minister, who brought this tradition to the United States. Norbert lost his life in Dachau during World War II, and Maya spent her final years as a minister in Massachusetts. So as you see, we have all sorts of flowers up here, which you have brought. So I invite you now to come forward and take one of the flowers that you did not bring. Take it home with you and remember the beauty of each other and the natural world of which we are a part. So I invite you to come forward and take a flower home with you.
our closing hymn today is, is also not in the hymnal. It's going to be an a cappella song that we will experience together. And the words are on the back of your order of service. And also, I believe there's a slide. Oh, good. Beautiful, beautiful slide. <laughs> so this song is called um, Oh Glory. And we're actually going to end it um, by creating a living soundscape of the natural world. So I'd like to practice that together for just a moment. So you could think about the beautiful Virginia wildlife that Reverend Aileen was just talking about, or you could peck an animal from Africa or some other place. Be a songbird. You could be uh, the whoosh of butterfly wings. You could be crickets. Um, but let's just give it a try. So think about an animal sound that you would like to make. and. Um, Let's go ahead. Ready? Here we go. That was wonderful. So <laughs> we can uh, we can do that together at the end of the song. Okay. <laughs> Oh, glory to the sun as it shines upon my face. Let's just do the first line. Oh, glory to the sun as it shines upon my face. You got it. And there's motions too you can do with me. So on glory, we're going to throw our hands up in the air. Oh, glory. Our benediction this morning is by Marnie Harmony. If we do not venture out, if on a starlit night with the moon brightly shimmering, we stay inside and do not venture out, the evening universe remains a part of life we shall not know. If on a cloudy day 
with grayness infusing all and rain dancing rivers on the grass. If we stay inside and do not venture out, the stormy, threatening energy of the universe remains a part of life we shall not know. If on a frosty morning, dreading the chilling air before the sunrise, we stay inside and do not venture out, the awesome cold, quiet, and stillness of dawn remains a part of the life we shall not know. If throughout these grace-given days of ours, surround us as we are by green life and brown death, hot pink joy and cold gray pains and miracles, always miracles. If we stay inside ourselves and do not venture out, then the fullness of the universe shall be unknown to us, and our locked hearts shall never feel the rush of worship. We now extinguish this flame. But not the light of hope and truth, the warmth of the community, nor the fire of commitment. These we carry forth in our hearts until we are together again. Our closing hymn is number 1064, Blue Boat Home. So please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing. Oh. Uh -huh.